and he got so frustrated from falling on his ass that he left the skis on the mountain and Rach walked home. Hey guys, Christopher Norris Rain. Today I will be talking about the very recent archaeological discovery of the world's oldest and best preserved pair of skis. And yes, they are from Norway. The story begins in 2014 when a glacier archaeologist uncovered a wooden ski at the Digervarden ice patch in Renheimen National Park. The archaeology project, titled Secrets of the Ice, has found numerous items from the Viking Age and earlier in this area. So far, some of the finds include remains of pack horses, clothing and weapons. Due to climate changes, a lot of glacial ice has melted and unearthed all these ancient artifacts. A lot of them have been extremely well preserved in the ice and new discoveries are still being made. The fieldwork is seasonal and can only happen between August and September when the level of ice is at its lowest. Keeping a close watch on the receding ice via satellite images, the team returned to the site where they found the first ski late September last month. They wanted to try their luck finding the second ski and five meters from where they had found the first one, they actually found the second ski lodged in the ice. So, after 1300 years apart, they were reunited. The second ski was actually in slightly better condition than the first one. Both of them had their bindings more or less intact. The skis are made of birch and the binding of leather straps. They are not identical, but the skis are made by hand in the 750s, so some cosmetic differences are bound to happen. Ooh. Replicas of the skis were made after the first ski was found, and to learn how to properly use the skis, a team traveled to the Altai Mountains, northwest China, where these type of skis are still in use. It does require quite a bit of training to master this particular skiing technique though. The bindings are very loose compared to modern skis and instead of ski poles you would use a big stick as a rudder. Have you ever tried skiing with these ancient type of skis? If you have, please share your experience in the comments. Now it's said that Norwegians are born with skis on their feet and we traditionally do very well at winter sports. So I think it's fair to say that skiing is an integral part of our culture. This 5,000 year old petroglyph found at Røde, Norway, would indicate that skiing has been part of everyday life for a very long time. In Norse mythology, you can read about the gods Ullr and Skadi, which are known for their skiing talents and often depicted with skis on their feet. And this classic image of Birkebeinerne, who were famous for having escorted the two-year-old heir to the Norwegian throne Håkon Håkonsson safely through a long, treacherous journey through the mountains on skis. Also, it's no big surprise that the skis were found in Norway and not, for example, Denmark. I don't know how well you know Scandinavian geography, but whereas Norway has almost 300 mountaintops over 2000 meters, Denmark has no mountains at all. I think the tallest point in Denmark is 171 meters, so it's basically a hill. I believe the requirements for calling a mountain a mountain is at least 300 meters or about a thousand feet, so uh, so not a lot of skiing going on in Denmark. Just so you know, it's okay for me as a Norwegian to badmouth Denmark. There's like a age-old running friendly quarrel between Denmark 
and Norway, where we basically shit Denmark for being so flat and they not being able to ski. And they shit us for being mountain apes. And that's how we roll. Anyway, back to Digervarden and the skis. So, what happened to the guy owning the skis? Well, we really don't know what happened, but there are some theories. First of all, the skis show signs of repairs, so they must have been of some value to the owner. So, it wouldn't make sense to just leave them on the mountain. The tips of the skis have holes in them, so it would be easy to just drag them behind you with a piece of string if you weren't able to carry them for whatever reason, or if the bindings had been damaged and you couldn't use them. There are many finds that indicate reindeer hunting in the area, so the owner could potentially have been a hunter. There have also been found several cairns in the area, which would indicate that there has been a ancient mountain trail here. So he might just have been traveling through the mountain pass, or potentially both. One possibility is that he might have lost track of the skis due to a sudden snowfall. But usually when you leave your skis, you would just shove them down in the snow so they stand upright, so he could easily locate them from a distance. But uh, things could have happened. There might even have been a avalanche that knocked the skis over so they were covered in snow. That's also a possibility. It's also speculated that the skier could have had a accident and that he is still up there in the ice, like an ice mummy. My theory though is that a Dane was visiting from Denmark. He wanted to lend the skis from his Norwegian friend and he got so frustrated from falling on his ass that he fucking left the skis on the mountain and Rach walked home. This is actually a very common sight still today at many Norwegian ski resorts. As a follow-up for next week, I'll post a video from a hiking trip that I did earlier this year in this area. I was in Jultunheimen National Park and I have some really beautiful footage from that trip that I'm really excited to put together. By the way, Secrets of the Ice, they have their own YouTube channel where I found all the footage that I have been using for this video. So for more information, check them out, their YouTube channel or their homepage. If you like this kind of content, give this video a like and subscribe to Norse Rain. It really helps out the channel and I do appreciate it. I'm posting new videos once a week, so be sure to check in next Sunday for a new video. If you want to stay updated with Norse Rain and other Viking related news, you can follow Norse Rain on Facebook, on Instagram and Twitter. The links are in the description below. That's all for today, folks. I will see you on the next one.